So in Fat Mascara, we always talk about sunscreen, but let's be honest, sometimes it could feel a little bit like, kind of like taking your medicine. Taizo is so different. It's almost like applying a primer. It feels like a primer. You're right. And this sunscreen is amazing. It is 100% a mineral sunscreen, which is so good because it works immediately when you put it on. You don't have to put it on 15 minutes before you go in the sun like you do with chemical sunscreens. Taizo stands for titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. These are the minerals and sunscreens that are the best choice for your skin, your body, even the environment. And you're going to look forward to putting it on. Like Jess said, it's sort of a primer. I would say it's like, first of all, it blends into to any skin tone. It has like a peachy beige color to it, the one that I use particularly, but it gives a nice slip and a little bit of a blurring quality. So you're putting on your sunscreen, you know you're going to be protecting yourself from all those signs of aging, but you're also perfecting your skin in the process, which is so nice. Also, Taizo products are cruelty-free, reef safer, free of parabens, gluten, fragrances, dye, phthalates, if that's important to you. Taizo is the sunscreen you're going to want to get, not just for summer, right now. Right now you should be wearing sunscreen. Go to TaizoSkin.com and use the code FATMASCARA15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order. That's TaizoSkin.com, T-I-Z-O Skin.com and use the code FATMASCARA15 for 15% off your entire order. Hello, welcome to Fat Mascara. It's a Friday. I'm Jen Sullivan. Maybe you're not listening on Friday. That's fine. Hi, I'm Jess Matlin. We have a great show for you today. Oh my God. Be prepared to be entertained. There's also a portion where you might want to like get in front of the mirror. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Like the, this, There's a group I, activity. There's a group activity. There's a group activity, and you're going to love it. You're going to love it. <laughs> you're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm already Please starting. share who we have on the show today. We have the, I feel like we need like little horns, little like, you know, da -da -da, the Lord Gavin, celebrity, celebrity unto himself, celebrity facial monsieur. He brings the knowledge he brings the entertainment, the charisma, the charm, and he brings the storytelling. I mean, this is really one where I want you to kick back, relax, and let him just sort of sweep you away with his tales of celebrities, skincare, and real practical, tactical advice for you to take to the sink with you. Okay, so listen, Lord Gavin, I'm just going to be honest with you for like the first, I would say like 99% of the time I knew who you were, I thought that Lord Gavin was a stage name. And then I found out that it was not a stage name. I thought it was a great stage name. I was like, this guy's smart. I love it. Lord Gavin. It's <laughs> like, I don't know if it was like Star Jones or something, like just sounded like a Great name. <laughs> well, if you're telling me I sounded like a powerful female attorney, I'm here for it. Love it. <laughs> it, it just sounded great. But you are a lord. Yeah, no, it's funny. I and it, the people are very confused around it because obviously there's not a lot of us running around in the good old land of America. But I'm from originally from Scotland. You can't tell by this accent because I'm a product of strategic incest. And we all come out <laughs> sounding the same way. And grew up in Scotland in the Highlands all the way back. So it's a heraldic title that kind of gets passed down. It's quite separate from the English system. So it's rarer, more unique and more fun. My great grandfather all the way back was very poorly portrayed in Braveheart, but was actually uh, <laughs> King Robert the Bruce of Scotland. And my great-grandfather all the way back was King Henry I of France. Queen Anne of Kiev of the Plantagenets was also a great-grandmother. So it's funny. It's something that's been passed down. And to your question, I actually did think back and forth, wait, shall I use my title? Will I not use my title? But the reason I moved to America in the first place was a dear mentor and friend of myself. Her name was Isabella Blow. And Izzy was an incredible creative director and stylist. She was a muse and a mentor, and she discovered some of the finest talent in the fashion industry. I mean, I think she's most aligned with Alexander Lee McQueen, Philip Tracy, of course, but also was fundamental in Galliano's journey as well. She was 
bold, vivacious. She was not of this time and of this world. And unfortunately, because of that, she is no longer with us after taking mm. her own life. But before she did that, I was working with her just after I'd left university. I was young. I was swatty. I left early. I was quite clever. And I thought maybe I'll work in a magazine. You know, maybe I'm the new Anna Wintour. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And she said, well, you've got to go to America. I said, why? And she goes, you've got to go there and become Wedgwood. I said, what do you mean become Wedgwood? She goes, well, think about it. In this country, it's oh, Fergie. In America, <laughs> it's the Duchess of York. Go and do that. I said, oh, that sounds quite good. So I traveled to America, went to drama school, thought that's what I was going to do. Turned out that the industry wasn't ready for me and I wasn't ready with my low self-worth to go through that mill. And I, when I started doing what I'm doing, I thought, would I use my title or not use my title? And I kept coming back and thinking, well, I'm the Duchess of York. And so I decided to use it. And I have to say, <laughs> it's given me some benefits, but also I think more so than ever, and it kind of is, pertains to our conversation today, I've often felt like I've had to work harder or prove myself that nothing was just given to me, that I've had to really put the blood work and sweat and tears into achievements. And so most of the time I spend apologizing for my background or my title because you hear that and people assume that, okay, everything has been easy. And so for many, many occasions I thought, well, maybe I won't use it. And then I thought, you know, well, why am I denying who I am or where I come from to make other people happy? I know my own story and it's part of who I am and it's fun. Was there a minute where you didn't use it in America or no? I mean, maybe. Yeah, no, no, there was. Like, I would just go by Gavin McLeod Valentine and I tried to pivot it that way. But you know what? Everybody wants to be touched by the Lord. And so why am I going to deny them of that opportunity? <laughs> it's too perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So, okay, when you came to the U.S., you said you were thinking about, okay, like doing something in like the arts, but then you found yourself in the fashion industry, right? Like fashion, mm -hmm. beauty, Tell us about that. Well, it was interesting. Growing up, I, I always say I was raised by three women, four women, actually. My grandmother, who died this last year at 102, love of my life. My mother, Madonna Louise Veronica Ciccone, and Alexis <laughs> Cant and Colby. And they were people who really taught me about style and glamour and beauty and luxury. And what was really interesting, my obsession with beauty started at quite a young age, in my teenage, for sure. But fascination by the, the application of fragrance and my mum coloring up her face in order to go out with a bold lip and things of that nature. That was like, oh my God, that's so glamorous. Um, but then we were talking in the, in the pre-show about QBC. I fell in love with a woman who would actually go on to be my mentor. Her name is Tova Borgnine. And she Tova? brought, yeah. Tova. Tova. Okay. And she brought skincare and fragrance to the lens of QVC, but very advanced. And so I thought, oh my God, I'm literally seeing the real life version of Joan Collins right now peddling her beauty wares. And so that was the transition where I went from seeing skincare as just washing your face, or I was, I had quite bad acne growing up. And so it became more of a solution based. And then it became, no, this is high octane luxury glamour. High octane luxury. Right? Yeah. She was the one who really spark this, this excitement in me about what beauty can, where it can take you. And I love the idea that she was kind of performing at the same time as well, and that she had kind of a fan following. I mean, who doesn't fall in love with that? And so anyway, to cut a long story short, moved to America, did the audition thing, didn't really love it. Ended up falling into fashion PR because I have the gift of the gav, I call it. And yeah. I uh, ended up working at Showroom 7 and 7th House PR. And then I moved on with Robin Barclay when she was setting up her own agency, working with CMD, CFDA award winners and things of that nature. And I was headhunted by an oxygen facial company called Intraceuticals that had come to prominence because it was Madonna's secret weapon. And so when I was exposed to this, working in beauty and seeing the different way, two things became apparent to me. Beauty is so much more about empowering people to feel the best versions of themselves. Now, we can wax lyrical about the, the means or the mechanics of advertising, which sometimes, until very recently, shamed people into feeling that they've got a correction to make. But I've often looked at it as, no, actually, we're giving you tools in order to get closer and more comfortable with who you are. So that was one side of it. And then I also understood that the beauty industry versus the fashion industry, it was more dynamic. It was really actually more fast-paced. And it felt to me grounded. 
because it felt what do you grounded, mean grounded. What does grounded that mean in to a you? narrative? Like fashion is sort of ephemeral; it changes, it floats. But when you're looking at real science, when you're looking at these age-old issues that you're trying to remedy, it kind of felt, and in a stature level, it felt more important and had more substance to it. And I think we can wear whatever we want. But if we do have insecurities about our skin or our appearance as it pertains to our beauty standard, that doesn't matter what I'm wearing. I'm still conscious of that fact. And so for me, that was the ultimate elevation of self-worth and self-esteem. Can I ask you a question, just a quick sidebar? Yeah. When you mentioned that like Madonna was so important to you, mm. who's like, which, what's your favorite Madonna phase? Well, I mean... I would be insane and I wouldn't be gay if I didn't say blonde ambition because I think that that <laughs> that perfect that performative perfection right that the yeah. from the the like the high ponytail like the I like the high, high ponytail. ponytail I wasn't so into the ringlets but the no, whole thing's just iconic no. the whole thing's iconic okay. and the fact that she could sing like that and move like that and her body was like that and she just and, and the fact that she was actually being provocative and making people angry was interesting because I always think, listen, are you pissing people off or are you just waking people up? And I think she was one of the people that gave the voice to a community that was left out, left behind, whether it be women who were denied any sense of attachment to their female form, mm -hmm. whether it was gay men who really, until, what, 10 years ago, we were still being made to feel utter shame. And, and not to say that people throughout the country and around the world are not still in still tricky situations with that. But I often talk about my generation as being the one that still has a great degree of scar tissue over the fact that it was a terrifying, shameful thing to come out. You hid it, you, you disguised it, but at the end of the day, you locked the door, you put the lights off, and you were Madonna. Because you could tap into that energy <laughs> of, I can do it, you've got this. And so she was a huge reference point for me in terms of perfectionism, of striving, of pushing yourself against the odds, of having opposition and refusing to be anything other than who you are. And we've seen that recently, right? I mean, people want to make yeah. this whole thing like, what happened to Madonna? Madonna has become more Madonna. Madonna has <laughs> refused, right, to Fooled play Fooled you, ball. people. I feel like she's laughing at home sometimes at what people say about her. I think yeah. she probably doesn't pay much attention because she's got more important things in her life. And I think, listen, there, we can all be examples in our community and in, in our sphere of influence to certain extents. But anybody that says to somebody, despite the criticism, I will do what I want to do. Despite what you think about me, I will be who I am. And despite what you want me to do, I will follow my own gut. I think that is the example of a true role model. I, I think people, regardless of you, yeah, whether or not you agree with her choices or her aesthetics, it's like, she's just like, I, I'm not going away. I'm not going to go quietly into the night or I'm not going to age gracefully or to your, you know, your liking. So, um, I mean, there's nothing more frightening to the patriarchy than a woman who refuses to back down and say my time is up. I mean, somebody that continues to shine a beacon of light for other people. And I think when she made that statement recently, we've turned this into the Madonna podcast. Um, no, I, I, I just think it, I, I, I think it's I, I think Madonna is an important topic. And when you said that she, well, first of all, when you said Lord. Lord Gavin and I mentioned Star Jones. I'm just thinking of another person who has a name that's like, boom, but it's like their real name. Yeah. But no, I do think it's relevant to your whole kind of story. Sorry, I interrupted you. You were talking about what she said recently. That, you know, that she said that, listen, the, it will be an easier passage for the women who come behind me. And I think that's very true. You look at the, the pop starlet vehicle whether it's Miley or Dua or whether it's, you know, Cardi B with her whap. None of that is possible. And we can argue and we can debate about where that line should be. But there was only a line. There was actually a cage before. And so I think that's very exciting to see that there is freedom of choice, freedom of expression. And while we don't give her the recognition, there are many of us, myself included, out here who directly know that they are here today, intact, fully formed, with wounds for sure, but capable of getting through it because we had someone like her who was an advocate, an ally, and somebody that made us feel like we could still ascend beyond that experience. And I think that's the thing that I, I will hold dear and think that she's incredibly powerful and important to my life for.
you mentioned we got on Madonna because you were talking about the oxygen mm-hmm. facial machine. Yeah. Did you happen to be able to use this on her or other people? No, I've not worked with Madonna yet. I do work with her daughter, Lola, which is really quite fun. Okay. I, my whole career, I've been one degree of separation. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. I, I just have I to be ready for it. You. I have to be ready for it. Yeah. You've pivoted. You went from fashion to beauty, PR to the hands-on aspects of beauty. Where did the pivot come where you then were like hands-on literally and, and became an esthetician? Or facialist, or what, what should we call you? I mean, I just call myself a celebrity facial masseur. But I tell you the story, it was very interesting, and it was a completely accident. And I think this is an important story for anybody who kind of feels like they're not doing the right job. Maybe they're doing it well enough that they feel like they're in line with it. But when you start to pay attention and when something really feels dead on the mark, pay attention to that, because that's a good sign that you're in you're in alignment. So I, yes, I joined into schools as global... PR director, I got in there and I realized, gosh, you don't advertise, you're not in traditional retail, you don't innovate new products readily, and you want to be in vogue, good luck. But what they did mm-hmm. have was a celebrity narrative. Madonna had wax lyrical about it, Miley had said she loved it, Katie had said she loved it, Kim Kardashian had said she loved it, and many, many other people. And so I said, well, why don't we create a division of the company by which we give complimentary treatment to the world's most famous faces when they need to look their ultimate best and it matters most? And they said, okay, go do it. So I put out all these invitations to publicists, agents, managers, producers, you name it. And one team responded. And that was Halle Berry. And it was six years ago for the Met Gala, her first Met Gala. And they said, oh, Halle would love to have an oxygen facial. That would be amazing. I said, great. Okay, I'll organize it. Tatiana, Tabitha. You know, they all have the same name. She'll be there on Monday <laughs> to give her a facial. And it will come from our spa network. I said, okay. So I, they said, can we get on a call and talk? So I got on the call on the Friday and talked to her stylist and her hairstylist, Castillo Bataille, who's phenomenal. And we just had such a good rapport. Like we were just joking and it was going to be fun and the energy was really oof. And so I called them on Saturday and said, okay, she's going to come on Monday. And they said, no, we don't want that. What do you mean don't want that? Oh, no, we don't, we don't want to do that. What happened? Oh, no. I've just put out PR release telling everybody I'm doing it or, <laughs> or the company's doing it. And they said, oh, no, we want you to do the facial. I said, well, I don't do facials. And they said, no, we, you need to do the facial. Uh, I don't do facials. No, 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 you need to do the facial. Uh, oh, my God. I need to do nerves. the facial. You need to do the facial. How many days away was this? Like two days from this then? This is two days. I need to do the facial. What'd fa- you do? You know, I said, God, I guess I'm doing the facial. So I basically, first of all, started with, my, I had the machine in my contract because, you know, I wanted it. <laughs> And so I knew how to do it to myself. So I said to my husband, lie down, I'm giving you a facial. And I literally practiced on about 20 people that entire weekend. So I go to her apartment on the Monday. I get in, I'm feeling highly trepidatious. I'm full imposter syndrome. My heart is pounding out of my chest. I can feel it in my throat. The door opens and it's her assistant and then it's her stylist. And they couldn't be lovelier. They were so warm, so lovely. Hallie came down her staircase and she said to me, and she'd just come off a long haul flight, I think from Asia, if I remember correctly. And she said, oh gosh, I really do need you. Thank God you're here. I really need a professional. How long have you been doing this? (laughs) To which I said, longer than I can believe. And I led her into her bedroom, which not every man gets to say. And (laughs) I lay her down and I started to do the oxygen facial. Did you give her like a little shoulder massage or anything? I did nothing yet. I mean, I was so scared to touch. I was like, okay, the applicator and me are between it. I'm just going to and we'll just go and see what happens. So it was about 40 minutes in and I thought, it's just not doing what I want it to do. It's hydrating, sure. It's enlivening the skin, yes. But I really wanted to lift the cheeks to separate what I call church and state, which is the jawline and the neck. I wanted to give you that cut, that contour that we now call the snatch and lift her eyebrow so she looked inquisitive. Because to me, you can lift it, you can freeze it, you can fill it, you can fry it. But if you're not addressing energy and well-being and connection between the skin, you're not going to look younger, right? So I wanted to do that to her and I had no means to do it other than my two bare paws. I said, well, I've done baking before. (laughs) Let me figure this out. So I just start doing a bad lip sync of like Joanna Check. And I'm like working. I didn't even know who that was at the time. And so I'm just working on her face. I'm like pulling at her jaw. I'm like lifting it up and thinking this. And she's, "Mm -hmm." I'm like, oh, well, it feels good. So it must be doing something. And the thing is, when you're faking something, you don't quite know when to stop. So about after an hour and 15 minutes, I thought, I should probably give her her face back. 
And she got up, she looked in the mirror, she turned around and she said, God, I look so beautiful. Thank you so much. And I said, God, I'm good. <laughs> Did you have spa music? I don't know why I care about these details. I'm sorry. I played Gavin. nothing. This was in the green. I knew nothing. <laughs> this is so I awkward. never went to this a spa. This whole thing is so awkward. I never did anything. But what I did realize in that moment was two things. First of all, with zero training, no experience, I did get a pretty damn good result. Second to that, I realized what really impacted me. It was taking somebody that had impossible pressure to look perfect, no time to do the, to be there, and to get the energy shifted. Now, I didn't have the language for it at the time, but I always say now when I work with clients, my focus is to ground them in their inherent deservingness to be there, because unless you're Meryl Streep, you still feel like you're going to get caught. And then to amplify their energetic output to meet the expectation of the event or the public. So if I can bring the energy in a central focused way, take the anxiety and just turn it to excitement, and then also work with them to get their talking points on cue, let's say if they're doing a carpet and there's something spiky going on in the, mm -hmm. in the media, that's something I can warn them up for. And then I always take them through meditation now to really ground them and, and get them centered for the occasion. But this is oh way after the fact. So you, you thrive in that right before the big moment is where you come in. It's not That's like, it. oh, we got to do once a week throughout the... No, you are the prep guy. Who's got time You're for that? You're the fluffer, the face uh, listen, fluffer. Listen, I say, listen, if you want to just get skin maintenance, I'll send you to Shawnee. I'll send you to Joanna Vargas. I'll send you to Ivan Paul. If you really want to be snatched with an inch of your life and you want to make it look like it didn't happen and you want to have a look of mm -hmm. glow and naivete... I will do that to you and you will be ready to be painted and go to the carpet. So that's kind of why I think I've got this unique place. But are you also about the positive self-talk? Are you also about like that kind of like yeah, what are you saying Russian gymnastics them? coach? Yes. I mean, I, this is what I do. But when I am working with a client, so let's say it's the SAG Awards coming up this Sunday. What I tend to do is if I'm working with a client, I, I make a decipher. Are you iconic? Are you nominated? If you're an icon or a nominee, you get to see me the day of. Because I have a stretch bandwidth, right? I can only maybe do four clients max on that day. If you're just someone who's fabulous and I adore and love you and you're going to something, you'll see me on the Saturday, okay? The results with me last a good four or five days. And so when I'm working with a client, I will go in. I will always start with an oxygen infusion, this time using a serum that Professor Bada, Augustina's Bada, very kindly made for me. And then I go into my rhythmic facial massage, really uh. tapping and targeting into the fascia. When you engage the fascia, you actually improve communication within the cell. It's a little bit like the burglar alarm goes off in the house and so the dogs come barking. It does <laughs> that, but it does in a way where you're really creating microcirculation. You're draining the lymph channel. And then when you address it with the skincare, it immediately is grabbing what you're putting in the skin because it's on high alert and it's driving it to where it needs to go in order to bear forward that result. So oh I do God. that. Then I put them under this incredibly chic dome, LED dome that was from Apatra London, which is by far and away the chicest beauty tools in the market. They're a fortune, but they're fabulous. I put them underneath this golden halo and then I take them through a guided meditation. Now, I'll put on spa music, or depending on the occasion, I put on a little bit of Phoebe Bridgers to set the tone. <laughs> guided meditation or Phoebe Bridgers. Or Phoebe Bridgers. Depends oh, yeah. on where we want to go with it. The funny thing is, when I was when I work with Phoebe, I thought, oh, what am I going to play for her? We'll go back to the spa. And then I take them through it. And I, my husband, who has his own company called The Seed Level, where he works to reprogram limiting beliefs, subconscious bias uh, against ourselves, to reprogram trauma and have people manifest and show up for themselves in their lives. He put together a little program that we worked on together, kind of looking at the eventing that we need to be going through. And so I take them through it. We do complete role play. How do you want yourself to feel in that moment? When you get off the out of the car, you get into the carpet. Wait, do they answer? Or is this like a rhetorical while you're massaging? Sometimes they do. Okay. I I take them down to a meditation and then we start to pull things oh, in. Oh, they're deep in a meditation. Yeah. Okay, so they're in a meditative yeah, state. Exactly. Okay, okay. So they might just be yeah, absorbing exactly. It. So we get them, I mean, I don't take them as deep as my husband does, but I get them to a point where they're like relaxed and we can really just work through it. We can fantasize and daydream. And I say, Well, how do you want to feel? What's the word or the intention? 
what do you want to impact or impart to other people while you're mm-hmm. there? Mm-hmm. And so when you draw those elements together, it shifts and shapes their experience thereafter. And if you have a, a, an actress or you have a client who's feeling trepidatious or nervous about a particular occasion, it can really reframe that experience because they've already been set up with intentionality. You've grounded them so they trust and believe that they're right where they're supposed to be. And then Mm. you've made them look so unbelievably glow stopping that they don't have to worry about their appearance. It becomes secondary so they can really show up. That's how you take a good photo. You get Gavin beforehand to like put you in the I'm iconic mode. And then of course the camera's going to read it, you right? You just feel better. It's like, you know, when you feel good, it's like, it, it sounds so corny, but when you feel good, you look good. It's like, if you feel, it's like when people are in love and like all of a sudden they look better, mm. but cause it's like, they feel good inside or like they leave a job that was toxic. And then people are like, you've got that, you know, everything about them just looks better. Yeah. I mean, why did why do we think Mariah Carey had such a big comeback? Because she was emancipated. Yeah. When you emancipate totally. yourself from your critical talk, when mm-hmm. you emancipate yourself from your skin issues, when you emancipate yourself from feeling like you're not deserving and you can just show up, then that's the yeah. most beautiful tool, the most beautiful product of self-worth is really what we're striving at. And I always say, listen, my goal in my own life and um, my friends, my family and my clients is to get to a point where we can show up as we are without offering an apology for being who we are and asking nobody's permission. And I think when we arrive at that point, that's when we are our most beautiful, regardless of our age. Do you think you're there yet? You know, I think I'm close. And I'll tell you why I think I'm close. Because when you up-level, right, when you get Mm -hmm. closer to an idea of kind of like who I am, the world around you responds differently. And I have to say, I'm in a highly competitive industry. You are. There are a couple of people who do not deserve to be named who (laughs) maybe have felt triggered, threatened, confused by my rapid success. But I will say the majority of people are incredibly kind and inclusive. The level of feedback that I get from my peers, the level of acceptance and friendship that I get from my clients, the level of acknowledgement and kind of just authentication that I get from my media partners or friends is extraordinary. And I, and I am very blessed and very lucky about that. And I think it comes down to the fact that I do allow myself to be seen and I don't hide behind my work. So I think I'm getting close. I'm not quite there yet. Of course, we all have our self-doubts. And you always remember the one negative or like, oh, that was yeah. a little Barbie. But I try to tune those out and just go, things are good. By the way, I don't know why I asked that with like a shady tone of voice. I was like, do you I, think you're there yet? I just meant like, <laughs> do you think you're there yet? I don't know. Sometimes the way I say things comes out really weird lately. I don't know. It's like a I chip. just think you talk in a <laughs> sultry fashion. It's a little bit Lee Radzable, a little bit Winona Ryder. <laughs> oh my God. Love, love, no. We love Winona. Winona. Okay. All right. Another question. I know we're talking about that all of this is very inside job. But let's be real, we've got, a, you know, thousands of listeners that are like, okay, I'm probably not going to be flopping down on Gavin's table in the mm-hmm. next week. I need some real practical skin tips. Like, I want to look great tomorrow at work or at dinner or whatever. Like, totally. what can we do to make our skin look that rested, serene, like at peace with myself vibe. Okay, totally get it. And okay. uh, good question. And this is why we're here. So let's get into the practical no, we're, we're stuff. Here, we're here, no, we're here for the whole Gavin package. No, but I totally, I totally get it because I want to give you action steps. So here's what I yeah. always say. Wash your damn face. <laughs> the amount of people who don't actually cleanse their skin is frightening. First but do you mean in the morning the, or at night? Like you just mean like you're gonna like, wash, like, uh, honey. You're gonna wash three times, okay? So when I wake up in the morning, I do wash my face with a ge- with a gentle cleanser. It's not okay. going to be highly active. Sometimes it's a cleansing balm. Most mornings it's a cleansing balm. The reason why I'm going to do that is because I want to make sure that all my impurities, which I've sweated out either through a night of sleep or passion, that we are moving those away from our. <laughs> 
skin, <laughs> right? Okay. So we've got to make sure that <laughs> so we want to make sure we're removing anything that's a barrier to the skin. And then what we're going to do, and then at nighttime, by the way, you're going to do double cleanse. You'll start your first with a balm and then you'll finish up with an active cleanser, something with maybe salicylic acid or glycolic, something that's really working on the purification and antibacterial properties. So that's your okay. cleansing in the morning, cleansing at night, double at night. I'm also in the morning a big fan of facial massage. Mm. I think it's really important. And I know everybody's like, I feel so silly when I'm doing it. Just don't. Just look, even if you're Catholic, just touch yourself. Trust me. <laughs> you will really enjoy this experience. Because what we need to do is make contact with ourselves. The heat from the fingers are the most perfect tools you can do. Okay? So what I always tell to people, start with your thumbs pressed under your chin and thread them upwards along your jawline. Jen is this doing is it going too. to We're activate mm -hmm. your lymph channel, right? What we want to do is remove the toxic relationships, the margarita, if you're in California, the edibles, anything out of the face, the tension we hold in our jaws because of the life that we're living over-caffeinated, over-alcoholed, stressed with an inch of our life, blue light damage from our phones. We want to make sure that that does not show up on our faces. So we're going to work it away. So I take my two thumbs, press them under the chin, sliding up on the diagonal across my jaw to the mandible, curving up to the lobes of the ear. You're going to repeat that five times. Now you can do this, whole thing can be 20 minutes, can be five minutes. However time you've got, do it in the morning. Okay? So you're going to do that. Then you're going to add your pointer fingers, put them on your nasal labial folds. Those are the lines that we can't really get rid of, okay? Take your thumbs under the chin, and you're still going to slide up. Now, because you're not seeing this visually, this is how I describe it. When you look in the mirror and you pretend, oh, what would I look like with a facelift? That is the movement you're going to make. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So sliding okay. up, pulling on the contours, giving yourself that upward swipe. You're activating the entire skin. You're moving everything. You're then going to take your pointer fingers, you're going to start at the corners of the mouth in the nasal label falls by the nose. You're going to be intentional. Do not hurt yourself unless you like that, but be intentional about it. Give enough pressure. You're going to press up towards the eyes, the corners of the eyes, very intentionally Ooh. five times. You will get snotty. Okay, you will get snotty. <laughs> oh, it starts, you're, oh, my nose is running. Yeah. Yes. Why? Because most dizzy. of the time that we wake up in the morning looking like we've gone five rounds with Mike Tyson is because <laughs> we're not clearing out our sinus cavity. <laughs> the congestion and the puffiness from the eye often originates oh, I can feel it down the back of my throat. What's happening, Gavin? What's happening? You're having a <laughs> detox, my love. Okay, so you're going to press it up and then you can even put a little sort of circling motion as you go up and make that bunny look with your nose and you're going to pat under your eyes. By the way, this is how I want everybody to apply their eye cream because first of all, eye creams always pump out too much than you actually need and so we've gone to two areas and this is going to set up the eyes so that they can be bright eyed and bushy tailed. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Then we're going to take our knuckles, roll them under our cheekbones, and just move up on the, uh, the diagonal towards the mid-ear. By working on this area, you're getting all of the puffiness, all of the chipmunk look out of the face, okay? You're engaging the system. You're enlivening the skin. You're tapping into those messaging systems so they can start to really wake up and put your skincare to use, Okay. We're going to do that. Two more steps, because we don't make this 100 years old, is you're going to take your fingertips and you're going to pretend that you're a harpist lying by an ocean in a mermaid tail. Take your fingers, start, and you're just going to flip up with a staccato movement, moving from the corner of the mouth up towards the ear. Oh, this is the something florage they do, right? Effleurage, yeah. Why this is so important is the fact that everybody thinks, oh, I've got to get detox. Okay, but what are you detoxing? Well, my lymph is really congested. Well, what is that? Everybody thinks it's sort of like water. It's not. It's gross. It's like chicken cartilage. It's salty. It's fatty. In order to break it down like a jackhammer, you've got to break through the hard lumps so you can slough them off to the trash cans. Are you talking about lymph fluid right now? We are. There's like chunky fluid in my face that I'm breaking up? Thank yeah. you. What a visual. It's salty. It's crystalline. It's Ugh. gelatinous. It's, it's you got to get it moving. You got to get it moving. You got to break it down so it can flow through, and then you put it to the center. Of course, points. I pictured water. I pictured lovely, clear water that just like is moving through my face and, and circulating stuff. And that would be so pretty, but that's not what's happening. We'll do an X ray, <laughs> you'll see the horror story.
<laughs> and that's the perfect way to do it. And then to finish it, you're just going to circle down the side of your neck, both sides, and you're going to press three times right on the clavicle where the soft tissue starts. Kind of that space between oh, collarbone and tender. shoulder. So yeah. tender. One, so two, tender. three. Because when you're not, when you drain your face like that, you take it down to the depot man. So if we think about it this way, the jaw going up here to the trash can, you're putting in your regular trash. Going under the cheek towards the center of the ear, you're putting it to your recycling. Putting it under your eye to your temple, you're putting it in the major trash can in your, your apartment or building complex. And then you know what? You take it down because the man with the van, the smelly van, has to come and take it away. So that's how you really drain your whole face out. So that's something to definitely do. You in. just worked us from like our jaw and chin up through our nose to our eyes, out back our ears and drain it away. Exactly. Like we had to... I like the trash analogy. Not very glamorous, but it's working for me. You know, exactly, yes. because we understand what that means, because we want to get it out. If I made it glamorous, you want to keep out. it close to you. Two things. I'm a huge fan of tools. Fingers as tools is always the best, but I also do love cryo. There's many things that you can buy in the market. If you really want to make a huge change to your appearance in the morning, maybe puffiness is your thing. You want to get snatched and sculpted. Do yourself a favor. Get a cryo stick. Or ideally, get a gua sha in stainless steel. Keep that in the freezer so it's super cold. When you put that on top of a cleansing balm, you have the barrier so the skin doesn't get frostbitten, but you get the movement to have the constriction. Because once we've drained, we then want to tighten. So that's a huge advocacy, and you can get them very cheaply. May I pause you? The cryo stick, are those the glass bulbous things that people put in their freezers these days or like? Well, I don't use the glass ones because I think that's an accident waiting to happen. But I love anything in stainless steel. I love the gold-plated ones. Angela Callia has a good one. Georgia Louise has a good one. Okay. Oh, the, the, the pink Got ones it. with the, yeah. the bow. And then you just, what do I do? I put them on my face like in the morning and just kind of tighten up? Yeah, you can put them, hold them over your eyes like granny's old tea bags and teaspoons, uh -huh. right? Yeah. So yeah. that's going to really help to constrict and tighten. Okay. Take them down and underneath the cheekbone. So lifting okay. from the center of the nose, sculpting out and thread it along the jaw. Anywhere that you want to tighten and lift is where you want to concentrate your efforts there. So if okay. I want to have this portion come in under my that's cheek. That's his pointing to under his cheekbone. Yeah, mm -hmm. then that's the private place to do. And as you put them on the angle, you're going to get that sort of drawn in, gorgeous. Snatched look. Okay, exactly. great. Yeah. Great. As if we had buckle fat surgery, which we don't want to get. Right. Listen, everybody, you know how two things people ask me all the time about. They ask me about a Zempic. They ask me about buckle fat. First of all, a Zempic, I, it's another example of this insatiable need to kind of be perfect. And I think it's highly dangerous. And I don't, I'm not speaking like that as a physician, right? Um, there are many advocates who say it's not that bad for you or people say it's terrible for you. We'll leave it up to the council of physicians to determine the outcome of that. <laughs> but I think it's dangerous when we prescribe ourselves to an instant fix, an easy solution. Because what we're not really doing is changing our behavioral patterns that got us to a place where we feel disconnected or uncomfortable with ourselves in the first place. So that's on that much. Buckle fat, I get why people do it. But I also will say this, it's only suitable for about 5% of people. So if you've got a very round face, you don't like it, you want more definition and structure, you don't want to add volume to the face because most of the time the fillers are just making you bigger, right, to have a yeah. contrast, then there's a certain candidate that that will work for if that is the aesthetic look they're going for. What I'm terrified and I'm seeing all the time now are people who have just a normal heart-shaped face or they have a longer face and they're getting this taken out and you know what, oh, it Jesus. doesn't age well. It does not age well. So that's a last step solution. And it's only and suitable just, yeah, for Yeah, you're just going to lose more, fa more fat. I mean, you're just going to, People want the fat You back just in. told us, these These are, by the way, that was excellent. Excellent. I love the steps here. But what what are you not a fan of? Like, these are things that you really like doing besides unnecessary 95% of the population getting buckle fat mm. removal. Anything else you're seeing, at least in the facial world or this whole world that we're involved in that you're like, mm, I don't know if that does anything. Well, I don't think PRP works for the most people. Controversial. Platelet-rich plasma. Yeah, the vampire facial. Listen, I think it works well for hair loss recovery and the hairline. I've seen some mm. good information mm -hmm. on that. Most clients will say to me, oh, I've done five courses of PRP. What do you think? I'm like, see nothing. Honestly, <laughs> I don't. 
I think that's the thing. But I also think this idea that you have to, you know, run to these extreme processes all the time is the only way to find a solution. Now, to be clear, certain things you will have to do. If you're really worried about your jowls, no skincare product is going to change that. So what are you going to look at? You're going to look at either getting a thread or you're going to look at doing something like Morpheus 8. Both of them have incredible results that do happen. They have different pros and disadvantages to them. So you have to do that. The thing that I'm not a big fan of at all is the lack of real education in this space. The the amount of people who are receiving their beauty knowledge through TikTok, through online chair fluencers at home who really don't know anything, but they think more... What did you say chair... Sorry, did you say chair fluencers? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, That's a new what one. I chair, love it. Sorry, what is chair fluencer? You know, she's just someone who sits in her in her house. She's not really an expert in any way, shape, or form, and she kind of throws things <laughs> together going, it works for me, which is great. But I always think I can't always say to a client, oh, this works for you because it worked for me because we're different people. Yeah. The yeah. idea that we are so obsessed with being hardcore about everything, we don't have to onboard our skin with five different actives of the highest concentration. And then we turn around and go like, why do I look like I ran away from a house fire? Why do you think that <laughs> happened? Right? And the majority of the time that I'm dealing with, because my job is to immediately make the skin look great. Yeah. I don't have six weeks to make someone like calm down, cool down, peel off. It's like, yeah. what do we have to do now? And what I run into all the time are people combining their retinols with their exfoliating toners. And then on top of that, they're using hydroquinone. And did they get that from a chair fluencer? I think it's a, a result from anybody who takes advice from, from someone who doesn't really know what they're talking about. Now, to be fair, there are people out there who are very experienced and they have real kind of knowledge because they've gone through an issue, they've resolved it themselves. There are influences that we follow and we kind of trust them because they speak common sense. But we also have to do our due diligence. Just because a product works for you two doesn't mean it's going to work for me because we're not taking into consideration our skin quality, our texture, the the variety of products that we already have in our cabinet. So I would say, listen, get the information, of course, but do make sure you talk to a professional about putting a system together that can really work for your individual needs, if possible. And if mm-hmm. not, peel it back. Cleanse yeah. your skin. In the daytime, use a vitamin C serum. It's going to help against free radicals and pollutants, antioxidants. So it's going to help to disturb the, the effects of the breakdown of collagen on the skin. It's going to give a slight protection against the blue lights that we have in our technology and our devices. Use a really good emollient moisturizer that has a protective element to it. And then put your SPF on. That's your day regime. Keep it simple and keep it clean. At nighttime, you're basically going to repeat the same regime other than you're going to wash your face twice. It's a double cleanse. That's what we call it. And by the way, beauty wipes do not count. Okay? So we're not going to use them. They're not efficient. They are not sufficient and they destroy the planet. So let's move on from that. So you're going to do a balm or you can use two active cleansers back to back. Then you can go into your serum, which is going to be, in my mind, should be a retinol or a vitamin A. If you have a prescription strength retinoid from your dermatologist, that's where you would slot that there in that moment. You're not going to combine your vitamin A product with an exfoliating toner. So if you want to use both, Parcel them off, one night on, one night off of either product until you've got the the bearings in the skin, but keep them separated. Then you're going to go into your night cream, your eye cream, and then you're going to go, bye-bye, sleep, sleep. I don't take the trash out at night? Well, no. Well, here's the thing. You, Whatever time in your day you can uh, commit to facial massage is great. I prefer it in the daytime because it sets up my system to be efficient. So it's really working mm-hmm. on not holding on to the toxins throughout the day. And it's kind of refining the effect that you've done on the skin as the day goes on. As a preventative measure, as an acclimation measure, the more you do it and you do it daily, your body will then take over a majority of the work. And it'll be quicker to see the result because you're reacclimating the skin's ability to do what it was always designed to do. You asked me before something that kind of I don't like or irritates me. I can't remember the exact phrasing, but I'll just tell you what Mm -hmm. I want to tell you right now. What has bothered me about the beauty industry for a very long time is this idea that we all have to dress up like Lara Croft. We've got to go into a tomb and evade spikes and spiders and death traps to get to this holy grail product to give us the thing that we want to have eternal youth, right? We're, we're kind of waiting for the death becomes our moment. In fact, what are we trying to do? We're trying to find solutions or products that reacclimate the skin's ability to do what it already knew how to do. 
You're not trying to trick it into something it doesn't understand. You're simply trying to say, hey, can you cook up the collagen like you used to do back in the day? Can you be a little bit more responsive to putting to use the skincare active so I can get the result? Could you turn over the dead cells, please, so I can be, you know, <laughs> ebullient and glowy? That is what we're trying to do. And we knew how to do it. But a little bit like coming out of COVID. Remember when we were like, it's over, or not really over, but we'll go back to yeah. work and we'll all be together. You know, I was suddenly I was like, I had to put down my gin and tonic and I had to go like, oh, how does working feel again? It's like with your body, you're resistant. <laughs> you're resistant to the beginning. You got to train it to do what it did. And that's why it's so important to invest more than anything. Yes, you can have invasive procedures. Yes, you can do this and the other. If you don't like your jaw, give yourself a new jaw. If you don't like your lips, give yourself your lips. I'm a big advocacy for do what you damn well want. Okay? But I do believe that it all starts with good skin health and skin cell communication. And until you get that part really remedied and really under control and have a pragmatic, uh, pragmatic solutions resolve process, you can do whatever you want and you're not going to look younger. That's quite, that's just simple. And we know what that kind mm. of locked in look looks like. And oftentimes mm. that comes because the integrity of the skin has not been worked on at the same time. I like that, the is integrity this, of the is skin. Is this what drew you to Botter? Can we talk business for yeah. a second? Absolutely. You know, it's so funny. I love to do anything I can that makes me look far better than I actually am. And what I found with Augustina's Botter, I was introduced to it about five years ago. I saw it at Kim Kardashian's and... I said, oh, and she goes, oh, it's the new cream everybody's talking about. I said, oh, great. And then it's kind of like, you know, when you say, oh, I'm I'm going to buy, I don't know what I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy a Land Rover Defender. And then every time you look in the street, you're like, there's another one. Or you're like, I'm going to buy yes. a Birkin bag. And all of a sudden it's like in every supermarket. So my <laughs> awareness had been peaked. So I started to see it everywhere. I saw it in so many clients' bathrooms. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? What is, what is this? And I remember somebody, I don't remember who it was, but someone said, oh, you don't know about the Bader? Because we didn't know how to pronounce it back then. Uh, you know about the Bader? Mm. I'm like, no. She went, you got to get it. So I went off to Violet Gray and I bought my first rich cream. And I was told, don't use anything. Use this one product for like 27 days and wait to see the results. So I did that. I could not believe the results that I saw. I mean, you're seeing the camera now. I had this and I had like four other massive pock marks from acne and I had massive discoloration. And in that time, I saw just in that one month period, true change to my skin. My skin held hydration more. It felt more enlivened. It felt energized. And I could see the quality and the, the, the texture change dramatically on my skin. It was incredible. Mm. And so I started to buy in all the different products and try and change them. But I'll tell you, if I may, just a very personal story. Yeah. During COVID, the week of COVID lockdown, I was simultaneously diagnosed with cancer. And I was diagnosed with prostate cancer that had spread. And it was very aggressive. So during that period of time, my incredible doctors at UCLA and Cedar sinai found a, a solution to that to that particular treatment plan because traditional therapies would either render me too immunocompromised in this climate that we don't understand. And they didn't want me to be in the hospital all the time because they knew it would be a breeding ground for the disease. Long story short, radiation was a massive part of the treatment plan. My burning in the back passage was extraneous at best. Ugh. It was extremely painful. And, you know, the one thing about disease is often the side effects of the treatment just can pound how sick you are. And it's those yeah. feelings that make you feel, know that something is off. And the barrier creams I was using, they just weren't working. I was trying every recommendation of people telling me what to do. And I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll try the, the Bada body cream. And so I remember saying to my doctor, oh, I'm going to use this. And he goes, what's that, La Mer? <laughs> and I said, no, 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 this is Augustinus Bader. And he's a stem cell biologist from Germany. And he works to rapidly heal the skin in his medical uh, lab. And this is a translation of that information. And I just want to try it. And I tell him what it's done for my, my skin and my face. And he goes, okay, let's try it. When I tell you after every round, I had little to zero burning. So it really performed well as a barrier cream. And the recovery from what would have given me the kind of like oucha magoucha waddle walk, I was completely remedied from that. And I did not have that painful side effect because of that product. Wow. 
And for me, in that instant moment, I said, God, this is different stuff. This is magical. Wow. So I looked it up, you know, I Googled it. I went into YouTube. I like, so every access points to the brand that I could. And the reason why I came to the brand, because in my mind, it is already emotionally nourished me. It yeah. has comforted me and it has given me respite from a really traumatic time. And in some ways, it sounds so funny, but you find something that works that makes you feel better and you start to feel a bit more hopeful. Oh, okay, if this works, something else could work. Yeah, I had no idea you had such a deep like, personal connection with the brand. Yeah, and it makes a huge difference that you can advocate and speak to something that you truly love because you know that it works. And I wow. know there'll be many people listening who go, oh, Augustine's Bar is so expensive. There are many entry points to the brand. I always say start with the rich cream or the cream. They're the two mm -hmm. brands that kicked it off. That's Professor Bodder's and the brain in a bottle. You can buy it at a 15 ml trial. You can do it at 30. You can do it at 50. Also, you can buy it through various websites. You can kind of do an afterpay or a payment plan to get into it. I would just say to you, if you're on the fence, you're trying everything, you're not seeing the results because this industry is very guilty of overpromising and underdelivering. Look, count up all of the things that you do. Like, how much are you spending on Starbucks every day? <laughs> how much are you going? Like, if you're in LA, like, what do you spend when you really go to Air One? Because you know it's not 10 bucks. If you're, you know, where where can you cut a little bit of the fat in order to invest into something? I think the $18 smoothie could probably go, yes. There you go. <laughs> it will really work a difference. And if I was to go to my, my shelf and look at the products that I've purchased myself and line them up, I'd be like, there's three rich creams there. What the, What was I buying that for? And so there are means by which you can enter that brand. And I, and I do speak fully and fluently, not as a paid advocate, but as a life advocate for a company and a brand and a product that rapidly made transformation to my own skin. And that's why just when I came and met you for the first time, it's an honor to expand the awareness and the reach of this brand because you know what? It just bloody works. Well, I mean, I have to tell you, when you came to Moda and you did the training, like I was captivated. I watched two presentations. You did two trainings and each time like it was like the first. Like I was so riveted and I Well, he's I, quite entertaining too. I'm very entertaining, lie. but I don't know. I just like I fell in love with the line all over again when you were explaining it. So, let's just like break it down really quickly. So, you really, you really like start with the cream. Can you just give us like one or two other products that I mean, obviously I know you love the line. Give us one or two other products before we wrap up that you really, really like love. And then give us a couple of non butter products that you are obsessed with. It could be skincare okay. or it could be like hair fragrance. Totally. Okay. So with your butter, you're going to start with the rich cream or the cream. Now, how you make your choice. The rich mm -hmm. cream is a decadent, luxurious, show glowy diva expression on the skin. Mm -hmm. Rapid radiance. It's designed for skin that is normal to dehydrated leaning. However, it is our universal bestseller because we're all dehydrated. From yeah. our drinking, our smoking, our stressing, and our iPhones, right? We're, we're depleted our skin. So we find universal appeal on that front. But it's for someone who wants a richer, more extravagant look to the skin. The cream is lightweight, fast absorbing, designed for skin that is normal to oily combination. So if you're concerned about pore texture or size, you're worried about hyperpigmentation, you don't really want to look like you're about to perform on a stage, then you might <laughs> want to go with a cream because you still have an alert, rested, vibrant look to the skin, but it's not going to be that kind of glow that you would want to pair with makeup. Okay. We often find that guys and teens gravitate towards the cream because it has more of a rested expression. Beyond that, I would say the two fundamentals that I truly believe in is you're going to wash your face. So if you want to just buy one cleanser, I would start with the gel cream cleansing uh, product. It's got a bit of salicylic acid from Willow Bark, rose water, cucumber extract, and it has something called TFC8. I should just point out that the, the proprietary ingredient in all the butter line is called Trigger Factor Complex 8. It's comprised of amino acids, vitamins, and bioidentical molecules that basically guide them like a GPS system to the skin to work with the individual in real time, moment to moment to give you the results that you're trying to remedy. Okay. So that's how that functions. So I would start with a, with an active cleanser because I really will be guaranteed that you're excoriating and cleaning out your skin. And then I would do the essence. And even the essence is a really good entrance point. It's $90 and it lasts a long time. Three forms of acids, AHAs, PHAs, and BHAs, basically working for the damage from neglectful parents that didn't put SPF on you as a child, taking care <laughs> of those deliberate suntans that we gave ourselves throughout the noughties, if you're the same age as me, and then our sort of 
forgetful behavior a day or two ago when we went out to get milk or hike the canyon and didn't put SPF on. So you're really addressing all of those pigmentation cascades that are waiting to come and get you. By the way, it's about 12 years. That feels essential. Right? Essential. That's essential. Together, okay. that is an incredible system. And then throw on your SPF. I'm a big fan of Mecca Cosmetica. I believe it's an Australian brand. And I also love Supergoop Unseen Screen. Plays very well with makeup. Products that I'm loving that aren't Bada. First of all, my biggest annoyance is you work on the skin, you perfect the skin. And then what happens? We cover the skin. So I love products which really help to kind of neutralize or even tone, but still allow the skin to come through. So I'm a big, big fan, obsessed with Westman Atelier, their skin fluid. I think it's a phenomenal product. I also love Bobbi Brown's What The Foundation, which is like a cream, almost like um, the Chantecaille Future Skin, but it's sort of a lighter expression. So you Uh still see the skin coming through. Love those products. I'm obsessed with the Contour Kinetic, which is a toning facial device. It's sort of like an electric micro cupping. It goes "Mm," kind of like delicate little kisses from a puppy on the skin. (laughs) And I use it in treatment to kind of amplify the cheekbone, but it's really good for tightening and toning the skin. It's $99, which as we know in the tool market is highly affordable. Kisses device. That's so cute. I'm not even a device person, but you just called it puppy kisses, so now I want That's it. That's it. You need it. But it's my one of my favorite products because okay. it does the draining for you, and it kind of amplifies. If you want to have cut glass vowel cheekbones. Wait, does that take out the trash that you were talking about earlier? Trash. If I yeah, use and this. it's this and that. Got it. But it also Got is, it. you know, not to reference another brand, but this is a gymnasium. See what I did there? For the face. So you are really working out the muscles. So you are over time, and it is FDA verified. It's a phenomenal product. And at the price point, it's unbeatable. All right, listen, we're going to we're going to we're going to do the fat the we're going to do the fat 5, the fat mascara 5. It's quick, it's word association. Do not overthink these answers, okay? Okay. All right, Lord Gavin, ready? Yes. What is the first beauty product you fell in love with? Ooh, that is easy. It's Aqua Gigio from Giorgio Armani. Okay. Yes. What is your favorite indulgent snack? Ooh, indulgent snack. Okay, I would definitely say probably like a peanut butter butter blast from Air One. <laughs> is that a smoothie? Yeah. That's a, okay. That's a fancy Air One smoothie, everyone. Isn't Air One all like healthy? Oh, do you food? mean like not? Do you mean like naughty? Yeah. Indulgent. You said indulgent. I mean, I, hey, that's his indulgent. It's indulgent price wise, at least. I'm obsessed with a Cadbury's cream egg. Yeah, mm. that's that's seems like twenty a day. More like <laughs> we went yeah. high low, high that's low. Like I love the thing I was like looking for. Okay, what's the last song you listened to on your playlist? Oh, that's that thick. That's that Jelly Baby from Beyonce Renaissance, the only album worth listening to right now. (laughs) Okay, if you weren't doing this, if you weren't the celebrity facialist, the celebrity facialist, what would you do? I would be an interviewer and I would be like Larry King because I love to hear people's stories and I love to give people a platform to share their story. I love that. And in the movie of your life, who would play you? Well, in the old days, it would have been Colin Farrell. Mm. But now... Because I want an ego boost. I don't know. Probably Timothy Chalamet would be kind of good because I want them to be able to act. You don't think Colin Farrell can act? <laughs> well, he's a little old now. <laughs> That's hence the ego boost, hence Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, let's get back a decade, not move forward. I get, I get you. I get you. I get you. <laughs> Lord Gavin, wow. What a journey we went on together. Thank you so much for sharing your story and your personal connection to this brand and everything you shared with us, telling us how to take out the trash. This was great. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like we could have talked for like four hours. We hope you enjoyed the show. It's your reviews and feedback that help us make the podcast even better. Head over to iTunes to rate and review us or email your thoughts to info at fatmascara.com. We also want to answer your beauty questions and hear what products you love. To share a Razor One product review or to ask a beauty question, email us at info at fatmascara. If you send it as a voice memo file, we can even share your voice on the podcast. You can also do that by leaving us a voice message. Our phone number in the United States is 646-481-8182. Thanks so much for listening. 